Hello and welcome to another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2 Lesson 1, Equations and Their Solutions. Before we begin this very, very important topic, remember that you can find a copy of the worksheet and a copy of the homework that goes with this lesson by clicking on the description of the video. As well, don't forget that at the top of each worksheet we've got our handy dandy QR codes allowing you to scan with your smartphone or a tablet, bringing you right to these videos. All right, let's jump into it. Obviously, a large, large part of algebra is solving equations. So it's important to understand what an equation is. Let's take a look at the definition. The definition of an equation. An equation is simply a statement about the equality of two expressions. That statement might be true, it might be false, or it may be open. It simply takes the form expression number one equals expression number two. Now again, we should know what expressions are, right? Expressions are any combinations of numbers we know and numbers we don't know, all right? An equation is simply saying, hey, this expression equals this expression. It doesn't mean that they're actually equal, all right? It's just expressing an equality, all right? Very, very important. Now, very often you get a very easy question, um, on this kind of topic, right? Take a look at exercise one. Which of the following is not an equation? All right, number one, three plus one equals four plus zero. Absolutely an equation. We're expressing an equality between this expression and this expression. Is it a true equality? I don't care, by the way it is, but I don't really care. Exercise two, we're saying x squared minus 2x equals 8. Is that true? I actually don't even know, but that's definitely an equation. This expression is equal to this expression. Number four, 1 plus 3 equals 6. Definitely an equation. That's an expression. That's an expression, not a complicated expression. Now, by the way, that's a false equation, but that's not the point, right? The point is we're expressing some kind of equality between two expressions. Finally, number three is the correct choice. It's not an equation, right? All this is an, ex is an expression, but it in no way is trying to establish equality between two things, all right? So it's very, very important that you can distinguish between an expression, which is just a combination of numbers we know and numbers we don't know with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and when we set two expressions equal to each other, okay? So I am gonna clear that out make sure you know the definition of an equation. For a lot of people, it boils down to something as simple as this. If there's an equal sign, it's an equation. If there's no equal sign, it's not. But still, you know, let's get some practice. Okay, consider the equation 2x minus 8 equals 10 minus x. Why can't you determine whether this equation is true or false? Think about that for a moment. Pause, right? Okay, well, we can't determine whether this equation is true or false because we don't have a value for x. We don't have a value for x. You know, so it might be true, might be false. Right now we would call this an open equation. It's an open equation. It's true or falsehood can't be determined. Why it's called open? Eh, eh, not very interesting. But let's take a look at letter B. It says if x equals 5, will the equation be true? How can you tell? Well, I'd like you to pause the video right now and think about how you can tell whether this equation is true or false if x is 5. Take a moment. Well, hopefully what you did is you said, look, you know, if x is 5, then you can actually evaluate these two expressions. You can actually just evaluate them. So for instance, 2 times 5 minus 8, that almost looks like a 2, but not quite, so I'm going to get rid of it. So 2 times 5 minus 8, well, is that equal to 10 minus 5? I'm going to put a little question mark there. Uh, order of operations, we get 10 minus 8 equals 10 minus 5. 2 is equal to 5. Well, no. 
all right? It's actually a false equation. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's false, whatever. So it's not true. It's a false equation because when we put five in there, we get something that is false. It's not true. Letter C says, show that x equals six makes the equation true. Remember to think very carefully, always, about your order of operations. Pause the video for a moment and go ahead and do this. All right, let's work through it. Well, the way that we can always test to see if an equation is true or not is to see if the expression on the left-hand side is equal to the expression on the right-hand side. So 2 times 6 is 12 minus 8. And 10 minus 6, 12 minus 8 is 4. 10 minus 6 is 4, so true. And again, it's true because the expression on the left is equal to the expression on the right when x is 6. It's as simple as that. It may be equal for other values of x, it may not be. But it is certainly equal when x is equal to 6. All right, I'm gonna clear this out, but I really want you to understand this. A lot of what we talk about in this unit is gonna boil down to things being true or things being false. So, you know, you're gonna have all these algebraic procedures, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, rearranging, factoring, all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, it's all about true and false, okay? So I'm gonna clear this out, copy down anything you need to. And it's gone. All right, so let's talk about solutions to equations. Solutions to equations. A value for a variable is called a solution to an equation if, when substituted into both expressions, the results in the equation, results in the equation being true. All right, in other words, if a value of x makes the equation true, it's called a solution. If a value of x makes the equation false, it's not. Okay? So, let's play around with that. Now, I can't even possibly explain how important that is. I mean, I can't even begin to explain. Okay? So much of algebra is about finding the solution or solutions to equations. But ultimately, I should be able to give you any value of x and ask you, is this a solution to the equation? And as long as you know order of operations and arithmetic, you should be able to tell me. So watch. Let's see if seven is a solution to the equation two x plus three equals 17. All right, so I'm gonna see if it makes this equation true. Two times seven is 14. 14 plus three is 17. This is true, so yes. And by the way, the answer is yes. The answer is not true. True tells us the answer is yes. All right, let's see if 10 is a solution to this equation. All right, I'm gonna get 10 minus 20 divided by five, and I wanna see if this expression is now equal to negative four. Well, 10 minus 20 is negative 10. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. Is negative 2 equal to negative 4? No, that's false. Right? That tells us the answer is no. Right? A little more complicated. Let's try this one. Actually, let me pause. Why don't you try C and D? I know they're a little bit more complicated, but we've certainly evaluated expressions of this difficulty level. So evaluate the left, evaluate the right. If they turn out to be equal, the equation is true. And if it's true, then that value of x is a solution. So pause the video now and take as much time as you need to on letter C and letter D. All right, let's go through it. Let's see if four is a solution. All right, I'm gonna put it in everywhere I see an x. We'll have two times nine on this side, six times three on that side. Two times nine is 18, six times three is 18, that is true. 
And so the answer is yes, it is a solution. All right, let's try this one. Being very careful, negative one squared minus one, two times negative one plus two, negative one times negative one is one. Be careful on that. Try not to use your calculator. Two times negative one is negative two. One minus one is zero. Negative two plus two is zero. That is true. So yes, it is a solution. Very, very important to understand this. Now, in previous years, your teacher probably called this a check. Probably said, oh, okay, we'll learn this algebraic procedure. And then you got your final answers, check. Okay, this isn't just a check. This is what it means for something to be a solution. A value of x, y, z, t, whatever, is a solution to an equation if it makes the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, if it makes the equation true, okay? And it's not a solution if it makes the equation false. Very, very important. So I'm going to clear this out. Pause the video if you need to. All right, here we go. It's gone. And moving on. All right. Determine whether each of the following values for the var given variable is a solution to the given equation. Show the calculations that lead to your final conclusions. All right, a little bit dicier here. We got some fractions involved, but I know you can do this. So what I'd like you to do is try E and F on your own, and then we'll go through them, okay? All right, let's do it. Let's see if two is a solution to this equation. All right, put it into this side. See if it's equal to five. All right, numerator, two plus two is four. Minus one, let's see, three times four is 12, divided by four, minus one. 12 divided by four is three, uh-oh. Actually, I shouldn't say uh-oh. 2 is not equal to 5. That's a false statement. And all that means is that no, x equals 2 is not a solution to that equation. However we solve that equation, no matter how ugly it looks, 2 is not a solution. Let's see if 8 is a solution to this equation. At the same time, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to multiply by a fraction, because it may have been a little while. I think it's a good skill to be able to do without your calculator. All right, let's talk about doing 3 fourths times 8. Remember how you can do this. You can either do 3 times 8 and then divide by 4, or you can do 8 divided by 4 and then times 3. A lot of people will do that first because then we can do 3 times 2 and get 6. Smaller number. Now negative 1 half times 8, that shouldn't be that hard, but then negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. 6 minus 1 is 5, negative 4 plus 9 is 5, that is a true equation, and that says that yes, x equals 8 is a solution to that equation. All right, that's it. If the left-hand expression is equal to the right-hand expression for a value of x, then the equation is true, and that value of x is a solution. Pause the video now if you need to. All right, we're gonna scrub some text. Here we go. All right, last problem. Kirk was checking to see if x equals seven was the solution to the equation four x minus three equals two x plus 11. He concluded that it was not a solution based on the following work. Was he correct? All right, so take a look. What did Kirk do? Says no. But there's a problem. Now it doesn't mean that he wasn't correct. It could easily not be a solution. But there's something wrong with the work, right? What's wrong with the work? What's wrong with the work happens right here and happens right here, but at least Kirk is consistent, right? The problem is, 4 times 7 minus 3 and 2 times 7 plus 11 
the multiplication has to come first. We have to get 28 there, right? We can't do the subtraction first, then do the multiplication because the subtraction is not in parentheses. Order of operations says we must do that multiplication first. And then look what happens. 28 minus 3 is 25. 14 plus 11 is 25. Yeah, see, that's true. That means the answer is actually yes. All right, so that is a solution to the equation. But Kirk doesn't think it is because he doesn't know his order of operations very well. All right, so watch those. I'm going to clear this out. So copy down what you need to. Pause the video. All right, here we go. All right, let's wrap this lesson up. So in this lesson, we saw something that was amazingly important. Actually, a few things. First, we saw just the idea of an equation. And the idea that an equation can be either true, false, or open. Open, you just want to think about it as, yeah, I can't tell whether it's true or false. It doesn't really even have a value, right, of true or false. But then we also learned maybe something way more important. What does it mean for something to be a solution to an equation? A value of x, or whatever variable you're working with, is a solution to an equation if when it's substituted into the equation, it makes that equation true. All right? So, thank you for joining me for yet another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by EMAP Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking.